Yep, sure. Uh, that's super. Thank you so much. Uh, super good to see uh, so many people uh, in here. You're, you're missing a really good session, but the good news is that you can watch that one later. Uh, so that's good. Um, yes, so as you've heard, um, I call myself a radio futurologist. It's a made-up word. It turns out that if you uh, print your own business cards, you can literally call yourself anything. Uh, and that's what I ended up uh, doing. Um, uh, I'm also uh, editor of uh, Pod News, which is a uh, podcast newsletter. It comes out every single day. Um, uh, it's very easy to write a daily newsletter when you're traveling and speaking at conferences. Uh, so, still, there we are. Um, it's wonderful to be here. Um, I came to the first Radio Days Asia in uh, 2019, and of course, um, then there was this pandemic thing. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, I, the, the last f flight that I took um, before the pandemic stopped all of the flights, I went to uh, the beautiful uh, town of Wellington in New Zealand, uh, and I walked past um, a rather beautiful-looking uh, uh, bar, and the bar looked like this. Um, if only there was some kind of warning sign about what was going to happen. Um, I'm a radio person. I've worked in radio um, for uh, more than 30 years or so. Um, I used to be a radio DJ, um, this is, uh, thank you, uh, this is a picture of me um, an awfully long time ago when I was on the air. Um, uh, there's also on this uh, photo card uh, is Chris Moyles who went on to be the longest serving radio presenter for BBC Radio 1. Uh, and also on this photo card is somebody who's in prison for killing somebody, so we'd better move on I think. Um, I then worked at uh, Virgin Radio in London uh, looking after their online, um, their website and, uh, and all of the stuff that they did uh, there. Um, during that time I launched the first daily podcast from a radio station in the UK. And I also launched uh, this, which was the first streaming radio app in the world. It was uh, actually written for us by a company called Sidus in Singapore. Um, and uh, if you want to have a look at a little bit of history, this is what the thing looked like. Look at that, there, there's quality for you. You could get a whole three stations on there. Um, and uh, the price of data was such that it would cost you probably around $20 if you were to listen to an hour, and that's 20 US dollars, not 20 Singaporean dollars. Uh, anyway, uh, as, um, uh, and as you've heard, uh, I'm now a radio futurologist and working for Pod News. Now, uh, I have a question for you. We're all uh, friends here. Uh, can anybody tell me what this is? Does anybody know? It's nothing to do, nothing to do with drugs, no. Uh, <laughs> it is indeed, it's a splicing block. And it was used for, John? Um, splicing. <laughs> Genetic splicing on rolls of mylar that had audio. Oh, no. If you, if, you, if you can't be useful, just shush. Um, <laughs> Yes, oh, so this was how we used to edit audio back in the olden days. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, you know, radio, uh, certainly when I first got into it 30 years ago, was really, really uh, full of lots of very expensive equipment. This, um, I'm not this old, but this was the first commercial radio station in London, LBC, and they spent you know, millions, of, uh, millions of dollars on the equipment that went into their radio uh, studios. And when I started working at the BBC um, in 2007, they had a thing that they talked about, which was big T versus little t, big technology versus little technology. And what did they mean by that? What they meant by that was, the big technology was the things that were connected into studios and microphone processors and, you know, all of the complicated things that made radio work. And little t, little technology, was all about um, computers and laptops and emails and everything else. And there was a very deliberate difference between those two things when I worked for the BBC 15 or so years ago. Now, though, it's very, very different. Let me show you an old age pensioner in his basement in New York.
CBSFM. It's Broadway on Friday. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, and the weekend's upon us, and to be totally honest, you better plan something fun to watch tonight, some indoor chores for tomorrow, and maybe something outdoors on Sunday. Oh, and by the way, it's National Cookie Day. C is for cookie. That's good enough for me. Me too. Plus, I'm going to do New York's greatest hits, so it's going to be okay. <laughs> So Broadway, Bill Lee, a fantastic broadcaster on WCBS-FM, one of the largest radio stations in New York, but literally broadcasting from his basement and using stuff that, frankly, looks as if he could have bought it in the shops. In fact, he probably did, because I looked up what he's got, and I found out exactly what he's got. Um, a euro, by the way, is exactly the same as a US dollar, uh, if that helps, uh, in terms of working out how expensive everything is. So... None of what you saw there was big T, was that uh, expensive technology that the BBC used to talk about. All of this is stuff which is available just by going down to your local um, audio store uh, and buying things. The mixing desk at the bottom comes from Australia, and it's a Rode uh, Procaster, uh, which is uh, very cool. Probably the most expensive thing was the thing that he was just reading his script from, the MacBook Air, sorry, the MacBook Pro that's uh, in front of him on the desk there. So things have very much changed in terms of the technology that we have in our, in our radio stations. Here's another uh, example. This is an example from the UK, uh, and this is the live um, travel uh, going out on the radio. Listen live, on digital, online, smart speaker, or the BBC Sounds app. We've got slow traffic on the Hertfordshire stretch of the M25 clockwise. Junction 17 at Maple Cross to 18 at Shorty Woods. We'll be open, but take a little while. Our time was when Stuart Clarkson, who's busy reading the uh, travel news, would be in the five live studios. But as you can see in this particular case, he's not. He's... The M6 in, in Cheshire heading north, one lane closed. We've got queues there because of an accident involving three vehicles at the Fellwall Viaduct, Junction 21. And the M62 in Cheshire also queuing after an accident around Junction 10, the Croft Interchange to Junction 9 at Winnick. Stuart Clarkson, Five Live Travel. Smile for the camera, Stuart. Excellent. Um, so, as you can see, big technology has, um, has gone away and new forms of getting radio on air have appeared. So let me show you some of those new forms. Um, and we'll start by going back to audio editing. Of course, we know that audio editing used to be done with reels of tape and China Graph pencils and, uh, and uh, splicing tape uh, and everything else uh, here. Now, of course, audio editing is done on computers, on any old laptop that you have. Um, this is a piece of technology called uh, Hindenburg. It's just one of the many audio editors which is available out there. Hindenburg is quite special because it's deliberately built for radio journalists. It's deliberately built for editing speech. It does things like automatic leveling of the audio that you pull in. Uh, it's got some really easy to use tools. It's everything you need to create a radio package and nothing that you don't. I wouldn't ever use it to edit music. It would be dreadful for that, but to produce speech, to produce packages for the radio, to produce podcasts, it's a fantastic service. But even this is a little bit out of date because we're moving on to tools such as this. This is a tool called Descript. Let me start it playing and we'll see how it works. Now, uh, more brain drain from the BBC this week, uh, it seems. Mark Kermode and Simon Mayer, we, we talked about leaving the BBC. Um, it seems that they've found their new... Now, how this works is that you can just go into the, um, into the transcript and just delete the ums and the ers, for example, which I've just done there. So now, uh, more brain drain from the BBC this week, it seems. Mark Kermode and Simon Mayer, we, we talked about leaving the BBC. It seems that they've found their new home, James. It's going to be at Sony Productions. It is, and actually, it's not their new home because it's the home that they always were on. Um, they, their show was produced for the... So I can get rid of that. I'm um, they from here. Just delete. Um, Play they always were on. Their show was produced for the BBC by something else, oh, okay. um, which is, of course, owned by Sony. And what they've basically done is they've taken their show 
what they've basically done. This guy's rubbish. Uh, let's delete that bit. Of course, owned by Sony, and they've taken their show um, as an independent show now. So, okay, and we'll get rid of the arm. Now, what happens when you're recording something and the presenter gets something wrong? The RJ they've gets something wrong. They've taken their show as an independent show now. So it's now called Kermode and Mayo's Take. It launches in early May. So let's pretend that I got the name of the podcast wrong, Kermode and Mayo's Take, and it's actually called, I don't know, something else, Ben and Jerry's Take. Now, typically, you'd have had to go to back into the radio studio and re-record that, but this system knows my voice. So I can just change it in the script, Ben and Jerry's. I can press the button. It can go off and make a piece of my artificial voice um, saying Ben and Jerry's, which it will download from the internet any second now. There we go. And now let's see if you can spot it. Which is, of course, owned by Sony, and they've taken their show as an independent show now. So it's now called Ben and Jerry's Take. It launches in early May. You can also pretty watch cool, that isn't live it? at the Podcast Show London um, as well. I, I love that you've just applauded a, a video. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that is amazing. It's a tool called Descript. It's been available for over three years now. Uh, and you can get it for your radio station at a very low monthly cost um, and makes life super easy to edit uh, and to, um, and of course, to also grab a, a transcript for your website and for, uh, and for other things as well. A really cool piece of uh, technology. Um, let me show you something else, which is a really cool piece of uh, technology. Um, this is a uh, podcast. It's a podcast called The Refresh. Um, and I'll just play a little bit on this uh, fake uh, mobile phone uh, here, just so that you can uh, have a look at it. Welcome to The Refresh from Insider, presented by WebEx by Cisco. I'm Dave Smith. And I'm Rebecca Ibarra. It's Wednesday, May 11th, and we're bringing you real-time news. Fresh like live radio, put on demand like podcasts. Here's the latest. Congress is on its way to sending an additional $40 billion of military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. The House overwhelmingly approved the package, $7 billion more than President Biden. Members of the House have voted to let their office staff unionize. The Democrat-led resolution, which does not need to go through the Senate or the White House, is meant to lower turnover. Aides have been blasting the House for low pay, which they... So you, you saw a podcast with chapters, uh, which you can do on uh, a lot of the different uh, podcast apps. That by itself isn't too exciting, but the technology behind it is capable of much, much more. So I talked to the uh, co-founder of uh, Spooler, who's a man called Andy Bowers. Spooler is a tool uh, primarily for people in the news industry. It allows you to create a dynamic newscast for the podcasting and on-demand space. Essentially, podcasts as we know them now are like print editions of newspapers. You put them out and they're frozen there. They're frozen in time, frozen in amber. What Spooler allows you to do is create the homepage version of a newscast. Every individual story is its own file. You can move them around in a playlist. You can update with new versions of any particular story without changing the others. And you can publish instantly uh, with updates uh, as often as you want. So it makes podcast publishing for evolving content uh, very fast, um, very intuitive. And uh, most of our clients so far are people who are in the news business, although anyone who wants updated information can really benefit from Spooler. So Spooler looks pr pretty clever. Um, let me show you uh, how the system works. Um, this isn't normally what they show, but they've uh, allowed me to uh, show you guys this. And what you can see on the screen on the left-hand side, oh, look, I've got a thing. On the left-hand side are all of the stories that they've got in their system. And on the right-hand side over here is the podcast itself. Um, and you can see that there are some things in here around um, uh, audio. The pink thing is the music bed behind it. All of these are individual stories, and we're just dragging another individual story uh, over. 
And as soon as you drag a new story over that you've, that you've recorded, it automatically publishes a new version of that podcast. So everything is up to date uh, and works really well. Now this might be an interesting, this might be an interesting way of uh, making sure that uh, this works for, um, for your news bulletins. And you might actually consider taking a news bulletin um, and producing it in that sort of a way. And in fact, Andy used to work in radio. I used to work in radio for a long time. Uh, in order to run a radio station or network, you have to have 168 hours of programming a week. With this, if you have a five minute newscast, you need five minutes. Uh, you can update it whenever you want. Spooler is essentially live radio meets podcasting. It's bringing into the podcasting ecosystem the kind of updatability, the kind of currency that is largely missing from there now. Uh, we like to call it real-time podcasting because it's not live. It's not strictly speaking as I speak, you're hearing it. But it's almost that fast, and in a way it's better because you don't have to catch it at the top of the hour or whenever your radio newscast runs. You, as a listener, can listen whenever you're ready, and you're assured that whatever the information is at the top of that newscast is the most current available. Now, you don't necessarily need to use Spooler. You could just use RCS um, and uh, put your news broadcasts together uh, using uh, RCS, perhaps. But that's, uh, but that's uh, certainly an idea. Here's another idea from uh, a music uh, RJ in uh, the UK. He's called Gav. He produces a show called 10 Most Wanted. Um, but he's also written some software as well, which allows him to get this show on lots of different radio stations, but sounding as if they're made specifically for that one station. There's a radio show and there's a piece of software that I've written, um, which runs the show, if you like. The show is called 10 Most Wanted. The, radio, the uh, piece of software is called Smart VT. So the listener hears um, a top 10 um, chart radio show, fairly typical sort of thing that you might hear in the evening on a pop radio station. Um, they'll hear me um, introduce the songs. Um, they'll hear me uh, talk about some showbiz. Um, but what they'll also hear is a show that sounds like it very much fits in with the radio station they're listening to. So ordinarily when a show takes a syndicated show, um, the station kind of sounds like it it departs for a while. It's almost like um, you could be listening to any station at that point um, because a syndicated show is delivered as, as a pre-made package of audio that then gets, that then gets aired, typically. Uh, they might break for ads occasionally, but other than that, you know, there's no real kind of mention of which station you're listening to by the presenter because technically they can't do that. I figured out there was a way to um, split up the show into individual audio files and not just songs, links... Um, imaging, that kind of thing, but also the individual links themselves are actually broken up into segments. Each link you hear might consist of four or five actual clips of me separately strung together that hopefully makes it sound like a fairly natural link. Um, but one of those pieces of audio could be um, me saying the name of the station. Then it could be me back announcing the song you just heard. Then it could be me doing a bit of showbiz. And then it could be me... Um, back ending with the name of the station again or positioner, that kind of thing. Um, and because I've built a system that allows me to automate delivering all of that to radio stations, I don't have to manually piece all of that together every day because that would take hours. Um, so I've recorded lots of clips of me saying all kinds of things, including all the variations of how to refer to the radio stations, and that then gets pieced together automatically each day. That's quite a long presenter break, Gav. Uh, would you like to hear a little bit of it? This is uh, 10 Most Wanted on two different radio stations. We'll start at Radio New Key. Gav Richards. 10 Most Wanted. Radio New Key. Hey, it's Gav. Let's get back to your countdown. This, for me, has got future number one written all over it. Such a feel-good tune. George Ezra, this is anyone for you. Song four tonight on Radio New Key. Tiger Lily move to the city. Gav Richards. 10 Most Wanted. B Radio. Hey, it's Gav. Let's get back to your countdown. This, for me, has got future number one written all over it. Such a feel-good tune. George Ezra, this is anyone for you. Song four tonight on B Radio. So a syndicated radio show, but you'd never know by listening uh, to it, which is really cool. Let's watch a bit of radio now. On Saturday night of August 6, 1966, 
Three teenagers park their car at a high school baseball field to listen to music near Fort Worth, Texas. The top 20 hit that month was Summer in the City by The Lovin' Spoonful. Dressing so fine and looking so pretty, sang the band's leader, John Sebastian. 16-year-old Edna Louise Sullivan, a pretty blue-eyed high school basketball player known as Louise, playfully wrote her name in mascara on the car window. Her boyfriend, 17-year-old Robert Brand, the car's owner, and his cousin, 16-year-old Mark Dunham, who was visiting from California, shared in the fun with Louise. But the idyllic moment was about to turn into a nightmare. 20-year-old Kenneth McDuff, not long out of prison on parole for a string of burglaries, snuck toward the teenager's car. 18-year-old... I think we know what's going to happen next, don't you? Um, So that's a piece of radio. It's also a podcast as well. But obviously you've just been watching it. Um, YouTube is a tremendously important place to get your content found. It's the second largest search engine on the internet um, and really important that you can get some really good content on there. So this is a piece of technology called Adori and what Adori allows you to do is it allows you to partially automatically and partially by using this particular tool add the visuals to your audio to make something that works much better on a video platform like YouTube. Uh, I spoke to Nathan Iyer, who's one of the uh, co-founders of Adori, who told me a little more. Now, YouTube is a visual platform, so what we do is um, Adori adds visuals to audio, so it kind of brings audio alive uh, with having um, call-to-actions images uh, that's those that are contextual to the audio, so that's exactly what we do. We just brought that brought that feature out so that uh, the creators can come in without having to bring their input their content or transfer their content uh, onto the platform. They can just simply uh, go off the RSS feed. We would discover it for them and and publish it to YouTube in three easy steps. Uh, YouTube has really increased as one of the top three listening consumption apps in the past. 12 to 18 months. So we've seen a skyrocket from probably hundreds of different podcatchers and apps uh, to Apple, Spotify, and now YouTube. Um, YouTube from a uh, younger demographic uh, and uh, you know Gen Z uh, targeting has just been a huge uh, increase in terms of consumption behavior. So. YouTube is not only important for video, but will be important for the podcast industry in the future as well. And truly, we are trying to be an uh, integration platform so that you can publish your audio content as a video format first for YouTube. And our next product will be TikTok and other social platforms as well. So we want to be the bridge between audio and video social content. So that's Jack Oliphant who also works at uh, Adori. Uh, YouTube is really important to be taking a look at. It's uh, really growing in terms of audio consumption as well as video consumption. And my suspicion is that they are going to get into podcasting in a much bigger way. uh, And that's important for us in radio uh, as well. Um, Who of you have used Zoom over the last two years? Probably quite a few, I would guess. Um, The good thing about Zoom is that you can interview somebody who is anywhere on the planet. The bad thing about Zoom is that it's not very good in terms of quality, it's not very good in terms of uh, usage, and frankly, it's not a good experience. Um, There are much better tools if you are going to be doing recording of people in their homes, recording of people in their uh, offices. Uh, Squadcast is one of those uh, tools, and what it does is instead of Um, giving you a Zoom call, um, what it does is it also records at their end. So it's sitting there, it's recording in perfect quality, and once you finish the uh, call on uh, Squadcast, then it will automatically upload the perfect audio quality from your interviewee's computer 
up into the cloud for you to get hold of that. It's a much better way of doing uh, remote recordings. Uh, and uh, Squadcast is one of the tools um, that you can use uh, for this. If you have questions about Squadcast, then the voice that's coming in through there is Ariel. Uh, she works for uh, Squadcast as well, and she'll be delighted to answer uh, any of those. Let's talk about, um, uh, let's talk about uh, artificial voices. Um, for uh, a couple of minutes. This is a tool called Veritone Voice. And the way that Veritone Voice works is uh, it allows you to do all kinds of artificial voices. Uh, so uh, here, here's an artificial voice in Swedish. Hej alla som lyssnar på denna konferens. Mannen som står på scen just nu är en idiot. Han är. Detta är så tråkigt. Jag ser fram emot nästa pass. And here's German. Ich weiß gar nicht warum ich darauf gekommen bin. Ich lerne gar nichts. And here's Spanish. Tal vez deberíamos levantarnos e irnos ahora. O vaya a una de las otras sesiones. Este tipo es un idiota. And here's English. As everyone else has been saying, this is the best presentation at Radio Days, and I have really been enjoying it. Thanks. Um, now, um, what, uh, and by the way, they didn't say that at all. Um, what you can also do with artificial voices, though, is you can do a little bit more uh, than that. Uh, so I, I spoke to uh, Brian, who works at uh, Veritone, and I asked them what they are using artificial voices for. So, James, what the idea was, we sat down with the programming executives at iHeart. We were playing some of the samples of synthetic voice. Stations are invested heavily in the morning talent. How do we get more out of them, make them more syndicatable but localized, even on their own stations in afternoon for like the weather? The you know Tom Pullman and Mark Chase kind of express they they know they need the weather in the afternoon, but this random voice showing up that no one knows just popping up doing the weather, and they didn't like it. So they said maybe that's a place we could start. So I create an example here for you to hear that with synthetic voice. Weather tonight is mainly clear and a low of 49 degrees. Tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day, 54 degrees and sunny at 6 a.m. in time for the Ellen K. Show here on Coast 103.5, powered by Morongo Casino. Good times. So what we did there was we accomplished the goal of getting rid of that unfamiliar voice using the branded Ellen synthetic voice in a very short uh, window. Then we used it to promote the next day. Hey, here's the weather for the morning show that you want to listen to tomorrow morning with me, Ellen Kay. And then by being her voice, we were able to synthetically sell a sponsor that is, sees it as more valuable than sponsoring some random weather voice, right? So that's one use of, of artificial voices is if you have a radio station which is mostly automated in the afternoon, you can use your breakfast show talent to um, keep uh, local information and stuff like that during the afternoon using an artificial voiced clone of theirs. Another way of using an artificial voice is to get your talent speaking in a different language, a language that they don't actually speak. Um, this is where I call myself talent and I play a recording of me that was produced by the very own voice uh, system me speaking Spanish. Now I don't speak a word of Spanish, but let's see how I get on. Pasa cualquier tiempo con cualquier directorio de podcast si verás una gran cantidad de programas en inglés. Pero el inglés es el idioma principal de menos del 5% de la población mundial. Gracias a una nueva tecnología inteligente, los podcasts podrían estar disponibles en varios idiomas, sin sonar como un robot de los 80. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, completely automated voice, and it's got me saying something that I have no idea what I'm saying uh, in a completely different uh, language. Uh, one more idea for how you might use an artificial voice uh, is on your own radio station's website. The, another way to use it is, this is the daily newsletter where you would have the option to have the talent read you the article. So this is an example of Ellen reading an article online that I'm not, I don't think, I think over the air, her voice has to be kept short synthetically so that we're not, you know, making people feel like she's not there. Online, I think the expectation that she's available to read articles, people figure out it's a new piece of technology. Top stories for today, Tuesday, April 5th. Tiger Woods reveals his status for the 2022 Masters Tournament. 
On Sunday, April 3rd, Woods shared an update on his verified Twitter account prior to the practice round, claiming he would be a game time decision for the tournament, which will begin on Thursday, April 7th. And then, you know, the dastardly part of it, the sales side of me, I have her doing a synthetic Coming endorsement. The 46-year-old publicly announced his release from the hospital 21 days after the Los Angeles car crash in March 2021. If you're ever injured in a car crash, SweetJames.com is your first call. The iHeart option to read is powered by SweetJames.com and by Paramount Pictures' new release this Friday, Father Stew, a true story about a boxer-turned-priest played by Mark Wahlberg in theaters this Friday. Americans, they'll sell anything, won't they? Um, a, a few other things you might like. Uh, this, I thought, was pretty cool. This is from a radio broadcaster in Minnesota called Hubbard. They have made a podcast app that only has podcasts in there from Minnesota, from where they're from. Um, I think this is pretty cool because, firstly, this is a good product, but also, secondly, it allows them to understand uh, what works and what doesn't in terms of podcasting and perhaps helps them with uh, new talent for their radio stations, too. Uh, another idea uh, is um, being able to record in your app your audience uh, so that your audience can send messages back so you can actually use those uh, on the air. I know that there are some apps which have even integrated with RCS. So you can actually grab the voices of your audience. It automatically appears in RCS so that you can actually just pull that in uh, and end up playing that. Uh, and another example of how uh, RCS is pretty clever, um, this is a radio uh, station or a set of radio stations now in the UK called Fun Kids. It's for uh, kids radio stations. And a number of these shows, um, a number of these um, full radio stations are actually being produced by just a system which is uh, sitting there in the cloud producing some uh, additional radio stations. Nobody has had to buy any more hardware. Nobody's had to do anything else. Uh, it's just simple, straightforward, adding a ton more radio stations for them to go out and sell. So I spoke a lot there about old technology with a big T and new technology with a small T and how everything is really all merging together. There's an awful lot of great new technology out there. If you use it really well, it can really change how radio is made and we can really focus on connecting with our audiences and making a great sounding uh, station. So thank you all very much um, for your time and uh, keep listening. Thank you.